So firstly, a massive thank you to all of you for coming. I know we're getting quite late on in the, in the day. Um, I've definitely had a couple of nightmares over the last couple of weeks about presenting to a completely empty room um, and people booing, but I suppose there's still time for that. Um, so my name's Verity. I work for a company called Travis Perkins, and I'm their early careers manager. My role at the moment sort of sits in between apprenticeship delivery and apprenticeship attraction. Um, so very much owning the apprenticeship attraction campaigns, all of the school engagement activity that we do. And then on an internal side, engaging with our current apprentices and our current managers of our apprentices, understanding how the programmes are working for them, gathering all of that feedback and using that information to drive the development of the programmes that we deliver. I think when you say the words apprenticeship levy, they either fill people with absolute dread and terror, or they're on the other side of the scale with really excited about the opportunity that it can bring. I think it's safe to say Travis Perkins are very much now on the excitement side of the scale. It's been a journey, but we're there. Um, and what I want to talk to you a bit about today is that journey that we've been on, share some tips and hopefully get you all at the same end of that scale that we are at the moment. So I won't go into too much information about our business, but for those of you who aren't aware, um, Travis Perkins are a diverse, um, is a diverse group of brands that supply building materials to the building, construction and home improvement markets. Um, we've got all the brands on there. Typically, people are most familiar with the Wix and the tile giants of the world because they're very much in the retail space. Um, but like I say, not going into too much depth, just to make the point that our brands are diverse, the way that they operate are very different, the markets that they're in are very different, um, and the way that they interact with their customers are very, very different as well. So for our team as a group apprenticeships team, we have a number of challenges, um, but this is definitely one, creating programmes that are going to work for all of our brands, no matter which market they are operating in. So in terms of our apprenticeship journey, we've been on um, qu quite a long one. Um, looking at pre-levy, our business has got a really great history of developing apprentices. Um, up until two months ago, we had the best cover star for our apprenticeship programmes ever. Um, so our ex-CEO, John Carter, started in the business 42 years ago as a management apprentice and worked his way through. So you don't get much better recruitment campaigns than that. Um, sadly, John retired two months ago, so now I'm a bit, a bit of a loss about what, what to sell within our recruitment campaigns for next year. Um, but we do have a number of managing directors and regional directors who have come up through these programmes as well. So in terms of business engagement with apprenticeships, it's definitely there and we're really, really lucky that we have that. Um, up until pre-levy, we were delivering a what we called a management apprenticeship programme. It was a two-year programme. The aim of it was to take people really early on in their careers, so either straight from school or college or with very little um, work experience put them on a two-year programme and propel them into management positions within our business. We had huge success with that programme, um, great retention of colleagues, really seeing them develop, and from the end of their apprenticeship, continuing that development and going even further in our business. We knew we wanted to do more. We wanted to touch other areas of the business with these programmes. We wanted to have more face-to-face -face contact time with those apprentices, but we just didn't have the resource and we didn't have the budget to do it. And then, lo and behold, the apprenticeship levy came into effect. Um, for our business, that meant three and a half million pounds of levy money to spend and kind of answered all our prayers in terms of what we wanted to do with apprenticeship programmes. What we were really focused on is that we didn't want this to be something that we created in head office pushed out to all of our branches and stores because they would have hated it. And I think most of you in your business have probably got that, um, not, not an argument as, su as such, but always that pressure between us in head office and us out in the operation. And we really wanted that to be connected. So we went on a UK road trip. We went to as many locations as we possibly could and we invited colleagues, managers, senior leaders into a room um, and we kind of said to them, what's working for you about our current apprenticeship offering? What isn't working? And in an absolute ideal world, what would you have? Um, we took all of that feedback and in 2017, when we went into Levy World, we launched those two programmes you see at the top there. We give all of our programmes our own name, so our level two trade supplier slash retail programme is serving our customers and our level three um, team leader programme we call managing a team. We launched those programmes with really good success. We put a whole infrastructure around our apprenticeships team. So these apprentices were having constant one-on-one -on -one interaction with a mentor and once a month workshop interaction with a training facilitator in a classroom type setup. Um, and over the last two years really, we've been adding new programs in that way. So we've been 
talking to the business, understanding where their skills gaps are, understanding where they're really, really struggling, and figuring out how apprenticeships can support them with that. Um, and you see where we are today, we've got 10 programmes that we're delivering across the business. We deliver all of these as an employer provider, and we have a few more specialist programmes that we work with apprentice providers on to help us deliver. Um, this journey definitely hasn't been without its challenges. Um, so each of these programmes, we have four intakes per year um, to put people through them. Um, what that means is that first ever quarter, probably that first two or three quarters, to be honest, were very much guinea pigs for us. We were figuring out what worked and what didn't. And some of them had quite a hard time in terms of their programme setup and what they were doing. Um, not least because that 20% on the job off the job training which i think is a sticker for everybody we were really struggling to understand what that meant we weren't getting an awful lot of guidance from the education and skills funding agency so we were just thinking right 20 percent that's one day a week let's make sure they've got enough hours of activity to make up that one day a week and that was having a real impact on our operation and really getting our apprentices to struggle to get that work done on top of their day job as we've moved through we've managed to interpret that a lot better um, as well as the, the actual off-the-job training, so they come away to workshops, they come away and have mentor sessions. They also get invited to come to support clinics once a month as well, where they sit in a room with other apprentices and their mentor, and they can just focus on their work. But we've now written into the programme loads of off-the-job but on-the-job activity. So what we define that as is absolutely anything they do that might have a learning outcome. So if they've gone on to a workshop about communication, we're urging them to go back into their place of work and try communication in that new way, try that new skill set, and just log what they've done. So they're still 100% doing their day job, they're doing what we need them to do, um, but it's tying in with their apprenticeship work and it's really illustrating what they've learned in their workshops. Another challenge we've had is our business has a really um, has historically had a culture of only developing our high performers, very much a tap on the shoulder, go on to this programme, let's get you to that next level type of culture. And that's just not how apprenticeships work. So apprenticeships are there to make you really good at the job that you're doing um, or the job that you're about to move into. What we found is these individuals were getting the tap on the shoulder, getting put onto these apprenticeship programmes, which again, they're a 12 month long programme, it's quite a commitment. And if at the very front, it's not something that you want to do, it's something you've been pushed to do, you're never going to be that great at it, you're not going to give it your full commitment. So that's another culture that we've really had to shift to make this really successful and make it work. Um, probably important to note that we offer these programmes to internal and external. So we do one large external recruitment campaign a year, but then we're using these programmes for internal colleagues to develop them and make them effective at their roles. From where we are today to where we want to go next year, so this is really nice, being able to offer our colleagues all of these programmes to really develop themselves and take them to that next level. It's a really nice thing to do. Where we want to get to is actually we need to do this. We need to do this to make our colleagues effective. We need to do this to future-proof our business. And this is kind of where we're getting to with our 2020 and beyond vision. So if we think back to that um, slide I showed you around the structure of our business and all of the different brands that we have beneath our group umbrella, when we launched our programmes in 2017 and since then, they've been blanket programmes. So no matter which of our brands you work in, you go on that programme. And that's been great for teaching people about the industry that we're operating in, but it's not tackling those individual challenges that those brands are experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. And when you're tying in that we're taking those individuals out of the operation for 20% of their time, we really need to make that worthwhile and make sure they're going back as a better colleague. So in terms of what the future looks like, our programmes are all going to be brand specific. So if you look at our level two serving our customer programme, so our customer service programme essentially, we'll take out the kind of core modules that are relevant no matter which brand you work in. So things like communication, things like safety and systems, they're going to be the same across all of them. But when you look at the product knowledge and the customer aspects of those programmes, they're going to be completely bespoke depending on which business you work in within the group. Um, to do that, we're going to work really closely with our operational teams. So we need to find out what are your key challenges today and what are your key challenges in the future? What keeps you awake at night? What really panics you? Um, and we'll find ways within the apprenticeship programme to focus on those and find ways to fix them. Um, we're looking at making apprenticeships as a really standard induction to the business. So any new starter at entry level will be given the opportunity to go on to one of these programmes. 
And what that's really going to support us doing is stopping our hiring managers from constantly fishing in the same pool of talent. Um, we get it all the time. We put a fantastic candidate in front of them, and their answer is they don't have industry experience. They're not suitable for my role. The most frustrating thing you can ever hear as a recruiter, because that transferable skill set is so much more valuable than product knowledge and understanding our customers. So by being able to offer this to every new starter, we're hoping to stop that mentality and show them, you've got a perfect candidate here, put them on the apprenticeship program and they'll get really, really effective at the role that you're doing. Um, another kind of messaging that we put with that, so most of the brands within our group are number one in their market, those that aren't are striving to be. So we kind of say to our hiring managers, why are you recruiting from our competitors who are not as good as we are? You're going to get colleagues who are not as good as we need them to be, and our business is slowly going to go down from that number one place. Um, and in terms of consistency of training materials, so it's great that these apprentices are getting really good training and really well developed, but what about the other colleagues that apprenticeships aren't right for? And that's about making all of those materials available. So um, if we do a recruitment workshop as part of the apprenticeship programme, it's making that workshop also available to colleagues outside of the apprenticeship so they can dip in and have the exact same learning, same models, same everything that our apprentices are having. Um, and then finally, we're looking for an apprenticeship stream to run through everything we do. So it will become a part of our PDP um, process talking to colleagues about where they see their development going, looking at our existing offering of apprenticeship programmes and seeing if one of those will support them. So as well as tackling some of our operational challenges, um, we're really hoping this approach is going to relieve some of our absolute resourcing nightmares. Um, we've been there that having to have that find the needle in a haystack candidate and your hiring manager wondering why on earth it's taking you so long. Um, within our business, that's particularly true of our drivers and our kitchen designers. So if you look at our driver population, any of you that have to recruit drivers within your business, you'll know there's not many of them in the market. And there are a lot of businesses out there who are just upping their salary offers and trying to knock everyone else out of that candidate market. For us, our labour turnover of drivers is around 20%. And at one point last year, we were having four new driver vacancies a day with absolutely no talent pipeline to, to find and to find these candidates to replace. We are now introducing a driver apprenticeship programme. The aim of that is to recruit new joiners, but also to take existing colleagues within our business that might be in yard roles, might be in warehouse roles, that have expressed an interest to develop into this area. And we'll put them on the driver apprenticeship programme, get them their licences, and hopefully incite a bit of loyalty in them by doing that. Very similar approach with our kitchen designers. So labour turnover of kitchen designers is 40%. We've now got massive companies in the market like Wren who pay an awful lot of money for that skill set that we just can't compete with. So again, it's about looking at our telesales population um, and using this kitchen designer programme to get them up to kitchen designer capability and keeping that pipeline coming through every quarter for us. Another resourcing nightmare that we're trying to tackle through apprenticeships is our ageing workforce. Um, so only 16% of our colleagues across the Travis Perkins group currently are below the age of 25. Most of our branch managers are absolutely incredible in terms of their product knowledge, their relationships that they've built with our customers. But we're kind of getting to a point where in five, ten years' time, they're all going to be retired and we've got nobody coming through the ranks to replace them. If you look at the programmes that we've developed, um, we are starting to find the solution for that and we're seeing this working in practice. So it's about taking people from school, from college, from university, putting them onto our Serving Our Customers programme, which is going to build a great base knowledge of product, of customer, of sales. Then starting to develop that leadership capability through our Managing a Team programme. And once they've moved into their assistant manager role, putting them onto our Leading a Business, which is a level five management program and takes 18 months to complete. And that will give them all the skill set they need to take on a branch manager role and continue to be developed from that point. So although we kind of got this, this problem in kind of 10 years time, most of our really great talent will be retiring. If we can keep doing this now consistently, we don't have to worry where that next um, lot of talent is coming through. Like I say, 16% of our total colleagues are under the age of 25, but if you look at our last apprenticeship cohort, 80% of those were under the age of 25. So quite quickly, you can see how that's going to make a real difference for us. 
On top of all of these um, really great reasons for doing apprenticeships, we have started tracking our return on investment for our apprentices on programme. The way we do that is at the end of their programme, we go through a questionnaire with them. We ask them questions like, have you brought in a new customer as a result, as a direct result of something you've learnt on your apprenticeship? Have you introduced a new safety measure that's saved injury time? There's a whole host of questions of that kind of nature. And from that, we found that our level two entry level apprentices on average are making a return on investment of 26,000 pounds. And our managing a team apprentices have an average return on investment of 40,000 pounds. So as well as all the other reasons, that just makes really good commercial sense as well. Um, so yeah, that, that's everything to cover on apprenticeships. Sorry, I've whittled through it all quite quickly. But if anyone had any questions, I'd be more than happy to take them.